Okay, okay, okay. Is this here? All right. Hey, good morning, First Christian Church. Wow, right? Hi, everybody in the back three rows, right? Yeah, that's about it. Wow, everybody. Uh, for those of you who are at home uh, watching, it looks like there's nine people here, but there's really ten. All right, so uh, just glad that we're able to come and worship together. Thankfully, uh, hopefully when you walked in, you grabbed the bulletin, uh, which is on the back. Uh, we do have uh, pre-made communion back there and up front and uh, normal normal communion. So, and you can come up and take that when the time comes as well. So, uh, if you have a little one, then they like to color because there's no children's church uh, during the service. We have bags up front here with crayons and, uh, you know, papers to, to draw on and everything. So, if you want something uh, to entertain your kids uh, or you... You know, who knows? Uh, you could come up and grab one of those. So uh, that's that would be amazing. So we appreciate that. Uh, if you turn on the back of the bulletin, you'll take a look at some of our announcements. We do have choir at 5 o'clock. We do have Bible study at 6. But there is no food tonight at 6. All right? So that, it wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. All right. So no food. If you want to bring your own food, you can. All right, but we have a choir at 5, um, uh, Bible study tonight at 6. And so uh, also remember that starting next week for the month of July, we're going to be taking a break from Sunday school and Sunday evening to try to regroup, refresh, and come back together for August. All right, so just make sure that you keep that uh, in mind. That is all of the announcements that I have. Would you please stand as we have our opening prayer? Father God, uh, it is so good to be able to come together to worship with you. It is so good to be able to come and worship with one another and to lift you on high and, and just express in various different ways that we love you, uh, that we want to serve you, that we want to honor you, we want to glorify you. And so, Father, when we come to do this on Sundays, it's, it's not about us. It's all about you. So, Father, I just pray and I'm hoping that our hearts are in sync with you uh, so that we can forget about this world we can forget about the things that are happening around us and so that we can just honor you and to glorify you and to praise you so father when we're singing these songs and we sing out loud and we just want to uh, just to recognize who you are when we take communion it's about recognizing your son jesus and and him being the the ultimate sacrifice the the sacrificial lamb that uh has taken our sins away and when we have these prayers, and I'm, I'm hoping, Father, that every single prayer that we pray, that it's a, a fragrant offering to you. Because, Father, that's what we do. We worship you, honor you, and glorify you. And when we do that, we grow in our love for you. And as we grow in our love for you, we grow in our love for each other. And as we love each other, we are a representation of, of your son and, and representing you and and we can make an impact not only in the lives of the people around us, but, but, Father, we can make an impact for you. Thank you, Father, for just loving us. Thank you for allowing us to love each other so that we could put you first. And thank you for your son who died on the cross for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know. You know, we've talked about communion, the difference in it and the Lord's Supper. But why do we have communion? It's not about the sacraments, the bread or the wine. It's about the body and the blood of Jesus. It's not about the ritual or how we partake. But it's about listening to Jesus and obeying what he tells us. It's not an obligation, but it's what? A celebration. We come to celebrate what Jesus did for us. We celebrate the gospel. <clears throat> Jesus was broken so that we can be healed. Celebrating communion marks the story of Jesus. He gave himself so that we could have a new start, a relationship with God. That's the beginning of your spiritual journey. Spiritual journey. It's not about the ritual, but it's about the person that we worship. But it's also a command that he told us. Do this as often as you will. Remember. Why do we remember? Because he not only gives us physical food, but he gives us spiritual nourishment. That makes the difference in our transformation. Peter summed it up in 1 Peter 3.18. For Christ suffered once for sins the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Celebrate your spiritual journey. Worship the one that gave you that right. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your plan of redemption in sending your son so that we may have life. We may have a spiritual relationship with you. Help us to worship and glorify your name in all that we do. In this day we pray. Amen. Sacraments are before you, so commune with your Lord.
you know, a number of years ago, a movie came out, and this song was the first thing that I heard from that movie. This song was out there before I ever saw the movie. The words of this song are so powerful. They are so important. They express everything that we as Christians believe. Because we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And it's given us new life. This is our creed because we believe. don't we? 
that's our rock. That's the, our foundation. We also believe that the blood that Jesus shed on the cross for salvation of our sins is paramount. That gift that he gave of his life's blood for us. We're saved by that gift he gave that day and by the love that Jesus shares for us. you let your mind's eye turn to Calvary. There were three crosses on that hill that day. And Jesus hanging there right in the middle. You can only imagine that the blood fell on the ground. You can only imagine how covered it was with everything he'd been through on the way from being tried to there. 
That blood ran red that day. And it ran there red for us. Because he was a propitiation for our sins. So, yes, yes, nope, sure, hey. So, yesterday I had the opportunity to do a funeral, uh, and uh, someone who used to attend here, uh, Olitha was her name. Uh, she was almost, in two weeks, she would have been 96 years old. And so, uh, services started at 11, so I got there around 10. 
uh, just so people are going through the viewing. I normally, uh, when things like that happen, I get to, to talk with people and share with people and, and get to know them a little bit more. But uh, I was <laughs> sitting in a chair, and uh, people were coming in, and this gentleman walks in, and I look over at him, and I go, I know his face, but I can't place his name. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm opening my Bible, and I'm looking at it because, you know, hopefully he won't come over and talk to me because I can't think of his name. And I look up, and he's right in front of me. And he goes, Pastor, how are you? And I go, I'm great. How are you? And he goes, good. And I said, I saw you walk in. I recognized your face. I can't place you. Where do I know you from? And he goes, well, I used to own Robinson Funeral Home across the street from you. And I was the mayor. And I went, oh, that's right. That's where I know you from. Oh, <laughs> nice to see you, sir. Oh, thank you. And he just laughed and went on his way. And then I was listening to people, and they were talking about two weeks in July. I guess B&W B, B and, B and used to shut down for about two weeks every July. And one of the ladies there, or her father used to work at B&W, and they said they, he planted, he made sure that his garden was ready to, to, to get to, to harvest during those two weeks. And she said, all that two weeks, all I remember doing growing up as a kid was putting away vegetables. P putting away vegetables. And I looked at her and I said, I am so sorry. Does putting away mean canning and she said, yes, you are not from here. And I said, no, I'm not. And she goes, yes, that means canning. And I'm like, all right, so canning it is. All right, guys, open up your Bibles. We haven't done this chapter for a while. I used to do this. I did this on my anniversary of when I was hired. So John chapter 15. I do this one because I think it's a reminder I think it has to be a reminder. I think this is one of those chapters where uh, when we look at it and we go through it, you have to do a critical analysis of yourself. You have to do a critical analysis of your ministry. You have to do a critical analysis of everything that you're doing so that you have this bar. You have this, this level of where Jesus says that, that if you are doing what he wants you to do, if you're doing it the way that he wants you to do it, if you're following and doing according to his plan, you're going to be able to see a difference. And let's find out about that because... If you are not doing it this way, something will happen. And it's not good. John chapter 15. Verse 1. And here's something I just saw. What's, what's your fourth word in there, say? True, true, right? Right? It doesn't say this. I am the vine. I am the true vine. The true one. Not just the vine. Not just a vine. The true vine. And he goes on and says this. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Ha! Huh. All right. Verse 2. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while each branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be made even more fruitful. So, God goes ahead and looks at all the vines, looks at all the vines. He looks at the true vine. He looks at those that are in the true vine. And we're going to find out about that in just a few minutes. And he says, because he is the gardener, because he is the one who's watching over the vine, he's watching over the true vine, and he's going to make sure that he is going to prune and get rid of everything that does not bear fruit. Hmm. 
Hmm. Verse 3. You are already clean because the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you are, unless you remain in me. Remain in me. Remain in the true vine. Remain in the one that God sent. Learn from me. Grow in me. Bear fruit in me. Therefore, you are going to be productive in what you do. You don't remain in me. You're not going to bear the right fruit. You don't remain in me, he's saying. You're not going to bear fruit. And the gardener is going to come and cut you out. And I think sometimes we have a hard time understanding what it means to be in him. We have a hard time understanding what it means to be in the, the true vine. Because even Jesus said, if you, if you want to follow after me, you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Jesus said that you have to love me more than you love your father, your mother, your husband, your wife, your kids, your daughter. You have to love me more than all those things. You have to put God first in everything, and you will remain in me. You have to put your whole life into me. But I come to church on Sundays, and... I sometimes pick up my Bible and read it throughout the week. I know where my Bible is. I do too. Mine's right here. I got the other one on the coffee table because I read that every day. This is in my office. I read this every day. Sometimes I'm reading and I hear a voice in the other office and I hear that voice coming closer. And he goes on. Nope, not at all. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, if you remain in me, if you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. How? He's saying there, if you remain in me and I am in you, if you ask me for anything, I will give it to you. Here's the difference. People who are in the branch, people who are in the vine, people who are following this, they know that the things that they're going to ask from God is not about me. It's not about what I want. It's not about my desires. It's not about those things. It's about whatever he wants because I'm in the branch. I'm following after him, and I'm going to do whatever he wants me to do. So I'm going to ask him a question and ask for anything in his name, and he will give it to me because I am in the branch. I am in him, and I'm doing everything for his glory, not for my own. Does that make sense? Because too many times we're asking the gardener for things that are not in the branch, that are not in the vine. And he looks at us and going, I'm going to start pruning soon. You keep asking for these things. And he goes on. Verse 8, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you uh, keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And what we have to do is go back and look in the Gospels about how Jesus loved his disciples. That is the ultimate way for us to know what true love is when we go back and we look at how he loved them, how he fed them, 
how he took care of them, how he disciplined them, how he showed them the ways, he, he, he nurtured them, he was there with them every single step of the way. And that is how we're supposed to remain in his love and how we're supposed to be loving each other. His way. And then he throws in verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I, 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 he's telling them there, listen, I'm about ready to lay down my life for you, and you're my friends. I'm about to do something for you that you will not believe because you're my friends. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay down my life for you because that is what he's asked me to do because you're my friends. Huh. And you are my friends if you do what I command. So when we start this Christian walk, when we start doing this, this life journey with him, when, when you decided to become a follower of Jesus, your life changed at that moment. It should have changed at that moment. It should have gone to that point where where you recognize it, it's, I am, I'm not me, I'm a representation of Jesus. I'm, I'm supposed to live the life that Jesus wants me to live. I'm supposed to talk the way that Jesus wants me to talk. I'm supposed to treat others the way that Jesus wants me to treat others. I'm supposed to, to start bearing fruit, and, and that means uh, making disciples. That means talking to people. That means sharing with them. That means loving on them. That means helping them and, and being a part of this and, 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 and being that example to the people around you and doing it the way that he wants and not the way that I want. It's about doing all those things, and when you start living your life, and being the way that you're supposed to, the way that he wants you to, then you're going to make disciples. You're going to be and do the commands that he wants. It's not about me. It's about him. I've been saying that to you for years. And he goes on. I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. What kind of fruit? Fruit that will last. So that whatever you ask for in my name, the Father will give you, if it's going to bear fruit. If it's going to bear fruit that will last. If it's going to be able to, to accomplish the goals that he wants to have you do. If you ask in his name, he's going to give it to you so that you can bear fruit in his name. Fruit that will last. So whatever you ask in, my in the name of the Father will give you. This is my command, love one another. So here he goes back to the same thing. He's been talking about one another. He says, listen, if you want to bear fruit, if you want to bear fruit that's going to last, not only does it have to be in accordance with the will of God, but it's by loving each other. And that's the hard part. It's hard because you are different from me and I am different from you. And every single person that is sitting around you is different from you. And it says here, because of this, he's asking us to love one another. Why should we be loving one another? Because we're all in the same business together. We're all in this together. We're all in the same business of bearing fruit, of making fruit, of helping one another. And so if we love one another and we start bearing fruit then it's where it all comes through. Because without love, there is no fruit that will last. 
And he goes on. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but as I have chosen you out of the world. This is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than its master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teachings, they will obey yours also. They will treat you the way, uh, this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would uh, not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. So he's telling us there, listen, life is not going to be easy. You want to choose this path? Love one another. You want to choose this path? The world is going to hate you. And it seems that even here in the United States, it's even getting more and more harder about this. The world is hating us more and more and more. They hated me when I was in India. People in town probably don't like me. They're going to hate me because of what I'm supposed to stand for. But then in return, you just love them. And he goes on. Uh, let's go to 21. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. It, uh, 24, if I had not done among them the works no one else did, they would not have found, uh, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen, and yet they have both hated me and my father. This is what uh, it is to fulfill what is written in the law. They hated me without reason. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. So one of the greatest things that we have in our possession is this book where we get to read about Jesus. We get to read about his life and what he has done for us. And, and we have his words. And we also have that advocate that he's talking about there too. That advocate being the Holy Spirit. And he's going to be able to testify. And it's going to be able to help you. And it's going to remind you. It's going to grow in you. But then we also have to go back and look at the very first question that he kind of asked. Are you bearing fruit? Are you living the way that God wants you to? That's the question that needs to be asked. What are you doing? And are you living the life that he wants? Only you can tell. All right, we have a song and we have... <laughs> huh? Instrumental, I know. It's an instrumental, so I'm going to be closing in prayer. And if you need something, please come down and see me.